Good morning, everyone. If I can encourage you to grab um, your teas, coffees, grab a drink, and we'll um, take a seat. We'll be starting in a minute or so. Good morning, everyone. Is everyone doing okay? Good, good. Welcome to, to Cornerstone this morning. I'm leading one of the leaders here. Um, I would love you to, to stand with us as we begin this time of, of worshipping our, our one true God, of worshipping the, the God who, as we're going through this Advent series, the one who came down to earth, who, who lived that perfect life, um, who lived that perfect death, to take the burden of, of our sin on the cross. And through the, the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, we can have that relationship with him this morning. And this morning as we gather, I just want us to be reminded of God's wonderful truths. Okay, wherever our hearts may be this morning, we have a God who knows the depth of our hearts, what's going through our minds, our joys, our pains, our sufferings our weariness, our anxieties. We may come this morning thinking God's silent. We might come this morning thinking actually God's been really evidently walking in, in and through my mist this week. But I want to remind you of the truth is, is God's here. God is here this morning. God knows exactly where each of us are. And I want to encourage us this morning before the, the music team just um, lead us in, in song worship this morning. I want to encourage us through Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. They should be on the screen behind me. It says, But now thus says the Lord, He created you, O Jacob. He formed you, O Israel. Fear not, I have redeemed, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. And that's amazing, isn't it? I've called you by name in your mind. Verse 2 goes on, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they, now, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I'll pass you over to the band. was born 
mission to, to, to save your people, to redeem us, Lord, to reconcile our relationship with you. Father, that night when you were born, what a glorious night it was. What a glorious night it was, Lord. Thank you that we can come together this morning, Lord, and celebrate that. Thank you that we can come together this morning as your people and gather and proclaim your name as Lord from our voices. Jesus, we give you all praise and glory this morning. Amen. As in the, the band playing the next song, we're going to continue our, our worship by passing around the offering bucket. The offering bucket is that extended worship where it helps the church reach local community, but it also reach those further afield in the, for, for Jesus. Um, don't feel obliged to give, just, if you, you know, just let it pass along. Um, but yeah, the band's going to lead us in our second song this morning.
take a seat for us. Let me just extend the welcome I gave you earlier. It's great to see those here. If it's your first time again today, my name is Lee. I am one of the leaders here at Cornerstone. Um, and please stick around afterwards for tea and coffee and then some time of fellowship at the end of it. Um, in a second, Chris is going to come up to share with you God's word um, as we con- continue our Advent series. But please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we we come to you this morning, humbly searching for you. Father, I'm thankful to know that this current um, situation, Father, is not unknown to you. And even in the pain, suffering, hurt, even the questions, Father, I thank you that you're, you're in our midst meeting our every need. I thank you, Lord, that this morning you are a God of hope, a God of justice, a God of truth, and Lord, you are a God of grace. Thank you that we can rest in your son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I pray for you in the midst of what I've just shared and what we've been walking through as as members. Father, I pray that in your midst, your spirit gives us that gift of peace this morning. Father, I pray that we're not distracted this morning, Lord, I pray you protect us as a church and individuals, Father, from the evil one. Father, the evil one is not invited in this church. Protect us, Lord. Bring unity to our church, I pray. I pray that even in the midst of this, Father, we can see um, your hand at work. And I thank you this morning, Father, you are the same as you was at the beginning of time. For, and forever you will be. Lord Jesus, I give you praise for that this morning. Lord, I thank you that we can shout and we can proclaim your name, Lord, that you are Lord. 
And Lord Jesus, I give all glory to you this morning. Amen. And we'll just pray for Chris as he leads us in your word. Pray that you speak through him. Father, bring clarity through his voice. Father, give him rest and peace as he steps up here as well, I pray. In your wonderful and glorious name, Lord. Amen. I know that we've come this morning and we feel hurt. We feel broken. There's a real sense of heaviness. And I know that. I feel that. I know that members have been processing a lot this morning, a lot this week. And there are fears for our future. There are things that have been said and things that have been done with wrong motivations. And without knowing or understanding even the ramifications of such actions, we need to care for one another. We need to care for one another. We need to encourage the faint-hearted. We need to lift up one another in prayer and in love. Peter writes in 1 Peter 5, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties onto him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Because your adversary, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout throughout the world and after you've suffered for a little while. The God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, will himself confirm, will himself strengthen, will himself establish you to him. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. We must, in this moment, seek to live as Christ would have us. For his glory, for his renown. As Peter says, we do that by humbling ourselves under God. By humbling ourselves under God, resisting the devil. He's prowling around. As Lee said, he's not invited. He is not invited into this church at all. He's not invited into our lives at all. He's not invited into our hearts at all. We are to resist him, to be firm in our faith in Christ Jesus. We've been thinking over this series already that he is the light that guides us. He is the light that steps in to the darkness, into our darkness, and draws near to us, just as we've been singing this morning. He is faithful to that so that we can walk in righteousness and not stumble. Friends, today we get to turn in our Advent series to continue looking at Jesus, that one true light. The light that shines in the darkness, the light that that shines out so radiantly, so brilliantly for all to see, for all to come to, for all to know, for all to follow. We live knowing that in the midst of darkness, in the midst of the darkness of a broken world, of the, bro- of the brokenness that we feel and we experience right now, even today, that the one true light, he is with us. He is near us and he comforts us. He is the light that enters into our problems and into the pain and into the loss and the grief that we might be experiencing. I would love you to turn to Isaiah 42. Today we're thinking of Jesus as the light who who enters into these things. In Isaiah's time, the people have been in active rebellion against God. The whole book of Isaiah, if you've read it, is a book of warning in regard to that. But the book of Isaiah is also a book of hope. It's a book of hope. 
Though Israel will face the consequences of their rebellion, Isaiah's prophetic words are so full of hope for the day when God would restore his people to himself. In this moment as a church, we might feel as though we're in a deep, dark forest. There's a picture that will go on the screen that kind of highlight that. We're, we feel like we're in a deep, dark forest, but and we can't see the wood for the trees. But in the midst of that deep, dark forest, the light of Christ enters in. The light of Christ shines through. Isaiah 42, God speaks of his chosen servant, of the one whom he will send. And he says, his spirit is upon him, and that servant will bring forth justice to the nations. His saving mercies, which he has revealed through Israel, are for the whole world. And in Isaiah 42, verses 6 and 7, he says this of the servant. I am the Lord. Sorry. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people a light for the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. This is truly a servant who brings hope. This is truly a servant who is a light to the nations. This is truly one that whom God sends, who, who makes blind eyes open again, because he is light. Prisoners are set free from injustice, from oppression, and from darkness because he is light. A servant is coming, a sent one from the Lord, from Yahweh himself, almighty God. A light that will overcome the darkness. Friends, we live in a world where there is light and where there is darkness. At this time of year, we, we, we maybe finish work or we maybe pick up the kids from school and it feels like it's nighttime as soon as we do it. It's darkness. Even during the day, we have to turn the lights on in the house because it's so dark for us to be able to see clearly. Right from the beginning of creation, from the very start of time, God wrote light and darkness into creation itself. The very first words of our Bibles. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. God spoke light into the darkness, and God saw that the light was good. Friends, light is always good. Walking in the light is, is always good. John tells us in 1 John 1 verse 5, something marvelous about the God who created the universe. It's just 11 short words, and he makes this clear. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. This is the God that we worship. This is the God who is faithful. This is the God that we know. This is the God that we follow, the, the God of all light, perfect light, no darkness at all. From, from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, we trace that story of, of darkness and light. We live in a world of darkness and light. We can't escape the statement, there is darkness in this world, there is light in this world, both literal but also spiritual in its essence. You were here last week as we looked at John's gospel. He who was in the beginning, he who has since come, uh, John 1 verse 5, the light, he is the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. This, this imagery of, of light and, and darkness, it speaks directly to our spiritual, to the eternal state of humanity. We're either in the light or we're in darkness. And darkness is synonymous with blindness and being prisoners bound up in chains. And we see that darkness all around us, don't we? 
We see wars. We see poverty. We see disease. We see death. Many of us experience that even within our own families. The, 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 the brokenness, the darkness of, of disease that runs riot in, in family lives or maybe even our own lives that cripple us. Even our personal lives, we experience the, the trauma, the, the darkness of, of abuse, of, of grief over the loss of loved ones, hostility that impacts relationships. And the Bible is as clear as day when answering the question, where does that darkness come from? Why is there darkness in the world? We, we live in darkness because the world is broken. And the world is broken because of sin, because we've rejected the one who is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. We've rejected his perfect rule. We've rejected his perfect reign, his goodness and his grace. Replacing it with our own way of doing things. Replacing it with our own selfish ambitions, our own glory. And as we look at the world around us, whether that's near or far, we know that it's not right. We know that it's not as it should be. And often in our, in our own hearts, we, we blame other people. We, we blame other things. We, we often even blame God. Right at the beginning of the Bible, we see the impact of sin in Genesis 3. And the very first blame shifting that occurs. Adam and Eve, they had just eaten the fruit of the tree and they felt ashamed and they were hiding. And in verse 8 of chapter 3, and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, the woman that you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree. And I ate. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. And I ate. When, when things are great, often we, we give ourselves the glory, don't we? When things are going well, it's down to me. But when th things are bad, it's God's fault. It's other people's fault. We blame shift so easily to serve our own devices. In our moments of need, even as Christians, we can find ourselves asking, God, what are you doing? God, what are you doing? In our moments of suffering, we might be asking ourselves, why this? Why me? In our moments of despair, where are you, Lord? The Psalms are filled with questions like that. It is okay to ask questions like that. But ultimately, we find our answer is finding God. In the midst of the darkness, the people of God longed for the light of the nations to come. And they knew that he would come, that he would enter into their darkness, and that he would lead them into the light. Turn, in, turn with me to John 1 in your Bibles. It's here in John's Gospel and that we see the one true light coming into the world. It's here that we see the light of the nations coming to open up the eyes of the blind and to set the prisoners free from the darkness. Look down at John 1, verses 9 to 14. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own. And his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God, who were, born not, uh, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, he came to his own, to God's people, God's chosen people, but they did not receive him. 
He entered into the darkness. He entered into the brokenness. He became flesh and he dwelt among us. The one who, who created all things, the word that spoke light into being, came in the flesh, humbled himself from the, from the glories of heaven. From the throne room of heaven, he became flesh, a, a little baby, a, a a little baby turned into a child who grew up into adulthood. This is someone who went through it all. He dwelt. He, he really lived among mankind, among us. God was faithful to his promises in Isaiah. He would send a great light into the darkness. He would give a light to the nations that would open the eyes of the blind, that would set free people from bondage of darkness, from the bondage of sin. Jesus begins his ministry, and he unrolls the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, and it can be found in Luke 4. When he found the place that it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then as we walk through the Gospels together, throughout we see him breaking the bonds of captivity to sin. We see him opening the eyes of the blind so that the blind can see again. Throughout the Gospels, we see him liberating those who have been marginalized and oppressed in society by, by bringing healing by bringing the forgiveness of sins. This, this light, this light who has come into the world, this great Savior, this great King, this great Lord, He came into the world, but He was different to that for which He was expected to be. The people, His people, did not receive Him because they expected something different. And yet God had been very clear throughout the Old Testament Zechariah 9, verse 9, for example. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. If you stop there, you could understand the expectation that the people of God had. But the very next line, humble and mounted on a donkey. On a colt, the foal of a donkey. This great light, this great king, he wouldn't be born into celebrity status. He, he wouldn't be born as a child of royalty. He would be born in humble beginnings. We've been singing of that this morning. His kingdom wouldn't start out with a triumphant victory march, riding on his noble steed or in his war chariot. Behold, your king is coming to you, humble, mounted on a colt, on a foal of a donkey. This is so outrageously different to what God's people expected. And yet God's word had revealed that it would be this way. His own people would not receive him. They saw him, but they remained blind. They saw him, but remained imprisoned and shackled in darkness. You see, Jesus is the light that enters into our lives. That one true light he entered. The word became flesh. He, he dwelt among us. He lived with us. And he entered in as the light who was full of grace and full of truth. The light of Christ is, is gentle and lowly in heart. And he enters into the brokenness of our lives. He enters into the darkness of this world, into the weightiness, into the burdens, into the pain, into the loss, into the grief, into the sorrow that we experience. He enters into all of that. He enters in and he draws near. He comes close. The light enters in and he says, come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I love this. The one true light he enters in. 
He takes the initiative. He makes the move. We are simply to receive of him. We are simply to believe in him and to trust in him and to walk in that light with him. The one true light, he enters into the darkness of the world, just as we were foretold by the Old Testament prophets, so that we can know that great is thy faithfulness, so that we can know that God is faithful to his promises, so that we can know that he never will leave us or forsake us, even when we are in the midst of the darkest seasons of our lives, even the valleys with the deep shadows looming over us, we can know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. The remnant of Israel was not forsaken. The people of God in Isaiah's time had hope. But Jesus came as a light to the nations, as as a light of the world. He entered into all of humanity's darkness, and that is why we can sit here now, experiencing the light of Christ, For the wonder of the gospel is that one true light, the Lord Jesus Christ. He entered into the darkness in a way that we would not ever expect. And he took upon himself all of the darkness of the world by being crucified on that wooden cross. Luke 24 shares an eyewitness testimony of it. It says this, it was now about the sixth hour. It was midday, the height of the sun, the brightest part of the day. And there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, until 3 p.m., while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, and Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. He died. Jesus took on the darkness of our sin and of our shame, and of our guilt. He took it on so that we can stand in the light. He overcame the darkness so that we could let the light shine in our midst. But we have to come to the one true light. We have to trust in that one true light. We have to lay all our burdens down before the one true light. We have to know that one true light. He entered into the darkness for us, but we have to receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, the one true light, he entered into this world to bring about new birth, new life, to bring about adoption as children of God, so that we might become sons of light. Jesus told his disciples, John 12, the light is among you for a little while longer, While you have the light, um, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. And then Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, For at one time you were in darkness. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and all that is right and all that is true. The one true light, he enters into the world that we might become children of light. That's the good news of the gospel, that the one true light, he didn't just enter into the darkness, he took on the darkness and he overcame the darkness. He overcame the darkness through his resurrection We who were once dead in our sins, we who were once in darkness, we are now children of light. And that is how we are to continue walking. We are to live as children of light, as children of the one in whom there is no darkness at all. And the fruit of that is found in all that is good, all that is true, all that is right. And we become children of light as we come to him as we receive of him, as we keep on coming to the light, to the light who is gentle, to the light who is lowly, to the light who is full of grace and full of truth. And so we come to him. We let him 
enter into our own darkness, we let him gently and lovingly expose the darkness that blinds us, that keeps us shackled. We let the one true light shine through the darkness, to break through the darkness, to overcome the darkness. We see Jesus do it in his death and resurrection, but we also see Jesus do it in his spirit each and every day. We were once dead, but now we walk as children of light, for that is who we are. And so we keep firm in our faith, in this glorious, in this magnificent, in this radiant light, the light that that entered into our lives, the light that entered into the darkness, the light that entered into the brokenness of humanity and into our own brokenness, to our own pain, to our own hurts. And we keep firm in our faith in Jesus Christ, the one who has opened our eyes and let us see, the one who has removed the shackles and has set us free. And we keep firm in our faith in him and him alone, for no other compares. He is the one true light above all lights. No one is like him. Let's pray in light of that now. Let's trust in that now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your promises are true. We thank you that you are perfection. You are light and in you is no darkness at all. Therefore, we can come to you. We can stand before you. You see everything. You know everything about us. You cut us right to the heart. And you know who we are. Lord, I thank you that you sent Jesus Christ, the one true light, into the world that he, that God in flesh dwelt among us. He entered into to the brokenness of humanity to deal with the problem of sin, to deal with the problem of sin and shame and death, to deal with the consequences of it, to usher in his kingdom of light that we might be able to walk as children of light. We thank you, Lord, that we are adopted into your family because of Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray that we would be people that receive of him, that believe in him, that know him, that follow him, that live for him in all that we do. Lord God, I pray that we would be people that that know the gentleness and the lowliness of Jesus who comes near us and draws near us, who gently exposes and helps us to fall on our knees, to fall on our knees in repentance and faith and to trust in him and the all-sufficiency of his grace, the all-sufficiency of all that he has done on the cross for us, that we can know we are forgiven, that we can know we are accepted, we can know we are his and he will never leave us and never forsake us. Lord, I pray that you would apply that sweet balm of the gospel to our hearts this morning. I pray that you would help us to know those truths, to experience those truths in our own lives. And I pray that that would stir our hearts to praise you, to worship you, to lift our eyes off even the preoccupations of ourselves, off the busyness of this season, and lift our eyes to you, the one true light, the Lord Jesus, who entered in. Lord, we thank you that you have the victory, and we trust in that. In Jesus' name, amen. We come to the table this morning because the one true light stepped into the darkness because the one true light broke into the darkness, because the one true light overcame the darkness. He overcame the darkness of our sin and of our shame in his death upon the cross. In those moments, the sun's light failed. The land was filled with complete darkness until Jesus breathed his last, when his body was broken and his blood was poured out. 
so that we might have fellowship with him, so that we might become children of light, children of God. So all who receive him and believe in his name can come to this table to enjoy this simple meal. Those who trust in Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. As we eat from the bread, as we drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We proclaim Christ and him crucified. This is a meal that remembers and commemorates the beauty of the gospel. We haven't done anything to deserve the grace that we get to remember in enjoying this meal. It was all God. It's not the will of man, not the will of the flesh, not by blood, but by God. Paul instructs us in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 27 to 32. He ever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the blood and the body of the Lord. Let a person examine himself and then be able to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For if anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself, that is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is relevant to us right now. This is relevant to us right now. We have to examine our hearts this morning before eating the bread and drinking from the cup. We have to let the Spirit of the Lord minister to us right now. Those who refuse to acknowledge their sin, but are harboring bitterness, malice, hatred in their hearts, who refuse godly counsel, who refuse godly counsel towards reconciliation with God and with others, and thus neglect the grace of repentance, let them not come to the Lord's table this morning. This is serious. This is serious. Otherwise, to eat and to drink in, in such a state is to actually call forth the disciplining hand of God. So come to the table if you're ready, having examined your heart, having examined your soul. Come during the next song as we sing, take and eat, take and drink in your own timing, in remembrance of him and the grace that he has given. Let's sing together. Let's stand together, united together, as we praise him, as we sing of that one true light who has entered into the darkness, who has opened our eyes and set us free. Here I am to worship, 
Though you have nothing come, He is the offering come. See what your God has done. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. I'm going to welcome the children back in uh, during these next two songs. Uh, let's continue worshipping our God who is worthy. Jesus, my Redeemer, there is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is to stay. To this I hope, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus fled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my peace. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ be. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus. For he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me. Until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, and my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. 
to this I hold. My hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Welcome back, kids, and um, we're just going to sing one more song together um, as one body. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. As broken hearts declare His praise, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. And fight in our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him.
Lord Jesus, we thank you that no one or no thing can. Father, you are unstoppable. Father, thank you for those wonderful truths which we can hear and listen to and sing to. Thank you for the wonderful truths which we can read in your word. Father, we thank you that you are that one true light, the light which comes and shines in the midst of darkness. Father, thank you that you are the lion. Father, you are the lion who is, who, who is slain for us. But by your grace, your love, and your mercy, you died for us, Lord. And we thank you for that this morning. Father, as we go from here, I pray that the wonderful truths which were shared just resonate in our hearts. That we go out, Father, living a life which is worthy of the calling which you have given to each of us. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining us this morning. Kids, great to see you. Looking forward to hearing what you learned in, in Kids Church today. Look, your tea and coffee at the back. Appreciate it. it has been fairly heavy this morning. Um, but God's good. God's graceful. He's merciful. God is the same God he was at the beginning. It will be to the end. Thanks, everyone. God bless.